Hi and welcome to another video. Now this time I decided to continue the journey along the Nottingham Canal. In a previous video we travelled from the basin at Langley Mill around the back of Ilkeston and finished at Trowell, the village of Trowell. And today I'm carrying on from Trowell. I've noticed just that we're going to have a couple of hours of dry weather between all the rain we've been having recently. It is the middle of March. Um, and I'm going to continue as far as Bramcourt which will follow the course of the canal which will meander around the village of Trowell it will meet up with Trowell Garden Centre at a later point before another short couple of miles towards Bramcourt which will finish off our journey for today as you can see right now the undergrowth or overgrowth is absolutely horrendous in places and this section in the very late 80s was actually completely cleared out everything was poured out it was filled with water and um, basically it was prone to leaking and if we go back to the section which we walked in our last video where it, if you remember me telling you about where the canal was filled in with old road surface and then just leveled off previously it was attempted to actually refill and it was basically there was reports of water going down into the gardens of the people's houses below the canal line and the project had to be abandoned and it, that section between Trowell and Cossa was therefore filled in. So the first section of the journey it takes us from the A609 road bridge. Now I've used public transport to get here today and conveniently the bus stop is the canal bridge or the Nottingham Canal Bridge and I've stepped down onto the canal towpath. Now this section is very very short as you'll see shortly the towpath and the canal is severed by the M1 motorway. So this is where this section of canal terminates and it is a very very short section maybe a few hundred yards and it does not get very far as you'll find I'm walking along where the canal would have been but it's gone into a pipe section and the canal carries along until we reach this section of the pathway here and then you've got the M1 motorway noisily up there. Now if we continue to walk through this undergrowth you can actually see where the piping goes underneath. So still at the M1 bridge, and now I'm going to continue and take the course of the path, which takes us back down to the A609. We'll go underneath the M1 and appear on the other side of the M1. Now this section of the M1, it was built between 1965 and 1968. Rugby and Leeds. So you have to imagine that this part of the canal it would have been severed around about that time, somewhere in the middle, probably around about 1967. Now next to the M1, the canal bed is currently much clearer and also quite inviting. So let's go down and have a look. Now with all the rain we've been having, I thought this might actually be a lot soggier. And um, actually in the middle it is quite soggy. Now this would be where the pipe section comes out at this end. You're not going to see much in there. Now we can actually walk the canal bed for a little section. And it's interesting just to see how deep this still is, even without... I mean, it would have been decades and decades and decades since this was actually dredged out and it was probably cleaned out a little bit in the 80s. 
after three attempts I've managed to climb back out of the canal bed I'm going to make a way further along now as we go around the outskirts of Trowel Village <laughs> to Rowton Pond or Rowton Pond, whichever way you pronounce it. Now this is the section from the section we've just come off from the M1 bridge which was turned into a pond basically. And I remember this being dug out in the late 80s, maybe 1990, 89, 90. And it used to be, it used to be right up there. And all this, the water was near enough where you'd expect it to be just below towpath level. It's considerably lower now. Now this can't be due to lack of rainfall. We experienced a hell of a lot in December and the last fortnight we've also experienced a hell of a lot of rain. So you'd have to partly put it down to leakage. The canal bed was also prone for leaking as uh, previously mentioned, and I expect it was a similar situation for down here. So after this, we'll walk back round, rejoin the main towpath and continue on. So leaving the pond area now, I can't actually remember if going that way, you could actually get round or not and cross back on the other side. So what I'm going to do is follow the path back around, walk back across the dam and get back onto the towpath. And as it turns out, yes, you could have walked all the way around, although it's in considerably worse condition and I don't really fancy taking the chances of that. Also, what you can see here is that the on the left hand side of the dam, so all this section here has all been completely dug out, it is very wide. So as the width of the pond that we've just been to, the flattened to uh, canal bed spans out all the way past there underneath those trees walking another 20 or so meters down it actually appears as a better access point on another little dam across the canal so we'll leave that water section but the water section does indeed carry on over onto the other side so hopefully this will continue for quite a way so i'd rather see a wet canal bed rather than the dry one. I'm sure everybody else would as well. So unfortunately, we now come to the next seventh section of the canal. Now there's some stop gates here. And there's some blanks laid over the entrance there and a gate to prevent 
walking around. There's some old steps leading up to the towpath up there. Now this blocks off and goes to what is now the Trial Garden Centre. Which I'm not sure exactly when this was built or severed, but I believe it's got to have been around about the 1970s, if anyone knows exactly when that was. So let me show you where we've gone now. In the previous video, we've come from Allsworth, followed it all the way round the outskirts of Ilkeston. Today, we've started it just here. And we've taken it over the M1. We've just come around here. Now, this point here is where the garden centre is. So, we've just come across this field and now we're going to rejoin the canal back here and take us on our way to Ramka. So we're now on the southern section of Trial Gardens, hence you can see there where it has been completely blocked off. So the canal bed is buried way, way far deep under there. We're going to continue walking now. That is the stretch which will eventually take us to Bramka. And the canal bed is actually rather wide here. It's very wide, it looks very boggy in the bottom. And above all, I definitely don't want to be stepping foot in any of that but then again keep walking further along and nature's taken hold again and it is a complete natural habitat for trees it just gives an indication of how long this canal has been left abandoned by the sheer size of these trees now that possess the ground that once carried a gorgeous waterway working men on the boats carrying freight this is all that remains of that history along this section. Now this is a slight diversion or a shortcut apparently. I believe it's a shortcut back to Trowel. Now if we follow it down, you'll see we're approaching another bridge. Now on the other side of this bridge will take you to the area known as Trial Grove. And on the far side there's a great big green area which I believe actually started to build new houses next to it. But it used to be for a couple of years at least they dug it all up for an open cast mine and at times this was very very deep. Now there was only here for maybe one. I'll step back because the wind's so bad just there. It was only around for one or two years, so I'm assuming they didn't actually find much of what they was looking for. As to say, it's actually turned into quite a nice spot. So heading back towards the canal again, after we've had our little jaunt across the bridge. You see underneath it is the railway line. Now this is the Trow Radford branch, which runs off the Arrowash Valley line and heads over eventually towards Nottingham. So that direction is going to be Ilkeston, Chesterfield, Sheffield. If we look on the other side, around the curve, at 12, 15 minutes time, you'd be arriving in Nottingham Midland Station. Now this railway line actually serves as an important part of this walk a little bit later on. So when we get back to the canal bed and the towpath, we'll head towards that way to see what lies out there.
may notice or even not notice about the Nottingham Canal is its lack of locks, bridges and other structures such as lock keepers cottages. Now this is basically due to the canal being especially from the northern side as far as um, the southern reach of Nottingham Bramcote area it's being a contour canal so it's following the lie of the land it's curving around the edges of the land so there was no need for any locks until we got to around about Wollerton which has been long gone uh, bridges usually accompany locks so they were missing so all you'd need is probably farm access and also the lack of lock buildings lock cottages again they go alongside with the locks and we don't really need them or they didn't really need them So this section, just past the demolished bridge that we've just shown you, you should have seen in a previous photograph. Now it's watered, but it does not look very deep. The drier section behind me, or well, nearly dry, is very shallow. This is one of the shallowest section that I've come across since starting this section of the canal. Now we are approaching the final stages of the walk. I can see Coventry Lane in the distance, which is the road that severs the next section. I think within five minutes we should be at Journey's End. Now we're just off Coventry Lane. Now we're still in water, and there's a pipe there throwing water out from the white right hand side to the left. So this tells me there's a lot more water on this side than there is the end that we've just come from. Where you can probably see the reeds and the shallowness. We've come onto this side. And it's probably the closest we've come to a canal on this entire walk. This is by far the deepest section that I've come across. So the water is almost at a towpath level. So clearly there's a lot of water been collected over the last couple of weeks. This is by far probably the deepest section on the entire Nottingham Canal from what I've walked so far in the last couple of weeks. None of the northern section that we did in the last video it had water in it, but it was probably only one, two foot deep, maybe three foot deep at times. And every one of these little dams that we come to with the pipe acting as a small overflow. The, the, the pounds are getting higher and higher. So the water on this side is probably around a foot lower down than the water on this side. And that's happened now, I think this is the fourth one of these we've come across. This is just so very deep, I couldn't imagine the water back in the operating days have even come this close to the path. See if you really look down there, there's grass. So it's not used to actually having water on that section. So that's almost it, we're at the End of the section between Trowel and Bramcut. And we're coming up to Coventry Road Bridge, which would take you between Bramcut off towards part of Wollerton and Balloon Crossroads. If I turn the camera around, you'll see where I've just come from. And in front is the final stretch, although extremely, extremely deep looking. We've still been following the course of the railway, which I showed you earlier. 
Apologies for the wind, it's just started raining quite heavy and the wind's picked up alongside it but the railway is that line there. So we're going to continue the last few hundred yards. And we'll take you back up to Coventry Road. And it's one last little section to show you after we've crossed Coventry Road. So there we are, we're at the very end of this section. So I've just come off the path to the left there. Up there is an access road. Look at these steps. It'll take us to Coventry Lane. And that completes that section of this canal. Across Coventry Lane, we're on the other side, that is the end of the canal. Apart from one last little nugget, which is down this pathway here. So there's Coventry Road Bridge there, there's the road. There's no canal there, <coughs> what we're going to do is follow this path down. Now remember I told you about the railway line, back at the bridge when I made a short diversion. That is the last section of the canal. So you should have just seen some pictures of the bridge, the railway bridge going over the canal. I decided not to go down to the bridge because there was a few people sat down there and they didn't look very pleasant, I have to say. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.